Hey everyone, I'm Jeremy. I'm here with Daryl today. How you doing? Good, mate. We're going to be talking about the uh, JavaScript SDK today. So as a JavaScript developer or a web developer in general, why would someone use the Microsoft Graph SDKs? So with our SDKs, we allow you or we help you do a lot of kind of standard behavior when working with the graph, handling standard error codes, doing some standard kind of tasks like batch requests and large file uploads and downloads and things like that. Cool. So with the standard error codes, one that comes up a lot is around throttling and handling the rate that you call our API. Is there anything the SDK does around kind of 429s? Yeah. So what we have done is under the, the SDK, we've built kind of a middleware pipeline where we can do all those kind of clever things like redirect handling and retry throttling. So if you get a 429 and it has a retry after header, we'll wait the appropriate amount of time. Same those if you get a 503 response. So there's a lot of different standard behavior that comes with HTTP that we're able to plug in these middleware components so to help a, you work. A bunch of stuff you get for free by going down that path. Absolutely. And, and if I've already built an application that's using the Microsoft Graph in that web stack using JavaScript, right. um, are there benefits to starting to try and layer this SDK into your existing application? Well, there's a variety of approaches. Well, one thing that you can really get a lot of benefits immediately is just using our TypeScript types. We yep. take all the uh, shapes of all of the models, requests and response models across all the graph, and we generate uh, a TypeScript library. So you can just plug that in, and then all of a sudden you've got strong types for right. your entire So if library. you're already getting a request back for your normal stack, you can at least get yeah. strongly typing going. Yeah. That's really neat. What's the best way to get started with this for a developer? Well, well, let me let me show you, give you a demo. Uh, I, I just opened here the page on GitHub for our uh, JavaScript libraries, msgraph-sdk-javascript. And we kind of give you a little walkthrough here, show you some of the benefits of uh, IntelliSense, and show the how to install it, either via an NPM package or via a script tag. Now, one of the ways that I like working with these things is just Let's go see a little sample, right? To get the minimum kind of viable thing working. Mm -hmm. So we've got a couple of samples here, one running under Node and one running for the browser. And the browser, it shows you how to get it all set up. Now I have it loaded up here on my machine. Uh, it opened up in VS Code. And I've got a few files opening. First of all, you've got to provide it, uh, the client ID because yep. you've got to get the auth working. So you'll fill in the client ID uh, in the secrets.js file. It's a very simple one-page HTML page, and we pull in the mstyle.js library here, and also the rgraph SDK library. There's one main JS file that gets loaded up on page load, and you can see in here how we're setting up what's called the user agent application, which is the mSAL way of configuring the security parameters for the application, in this case, the client ID. And then we have our auth provider, which is kind of an adapter to mSAL and working with the graph. And we'll take care of taking that token, putting it in the right place, and handling certain error codes that come back from uh, mSAL. Just and and mSAL is the Microsoft Authentication Library that helps with the whole process of authenticating the user that's going to be yeah, calling it, the graph. It, it's our standard approach for, well, for any application using Azure AD, yep. the MSAL library works. We just kind of specialized this adapter to help you with the graph scenario. Yep. So this particular uh, client gets set up here, this Microsoft Graph client, and then we have a, a small request library just to kind of show you how to use it. So you do client.api slash me get, and it will return back the user profile. You can slash, slash me dot slash messages. There's a bunch of different examples in here. And if I were to uh, just do an NPM start on here, you'll see what this application looks like when it's running. So little browser, I click the one of these buttons here, get my details. When I make that request, it says, oh, this is not authenticated. Oh, I better get an authentication token. So it pops up uh, this login dialog, which is handled by MSAL for us. We click on here, and it's going to sign in. And then it's going to, oh, well, first, it's going to authenticate the application. Right, uh, the permissions give, you're using. Give consent to the application for all the things that it wants to access. We click Accept. And then it's going to display the results out in the results app. Now, if I click on get my mails, we won't have to go through that same dance because there's a token cache there that has all that information. I can go click on that, and it returns back just a JSON blob of all of my emails. That's really nice. And that's as easy as it is to get started. Great. So if you're interested in this and you want to get started today, graph.microsoft.com, click get started at the top. 
You'll see JavaScript as one of the options there and we give you a tutorial to get started, links straight to the SDK pages Daryl just showed, as well as a quick start there we can get up and going within a few minutes. So thanks for your time, Daryl. I really appreciate it. Thank you, it. Jeremy.